Let's look at what influences the viscosity of lava. Now, viscosity is just resistance to flow. So something that is very viscous is nice and thick and it's more difficult for it to flow. Something that has a low viscosity is gonna flow like water. So really easy to flow. It does not resist flowing. So that's what viscosity is to start with. We're gonna look at two things that influence it. The first one's kind of the easiest one and that's temperature. So this is something that you can probably think of on your own. So let's take pancake syrup. If you have pancake syrup that, or even honey, if that's at room temperature or even a little colder, that might be really difficult to flow. It has high viscosity. But when you start to heat that up, that pancake syrup is gonna flow much more quickly. That honey will flow much more quickly because the viscosity drops, it lowers. So you increase the temperature and then you lower the viscosity. So it's nice and easy to flow. The second thing is going to be the composition of that lava. So that gets a little more tricky and this has to do with the amount of silica that's actually in it. So remember silica is the amount of silicon and oxygen. It's in those silicon tetrahedrons. Um, and so what's gonna happen is if you have something with low silica, it's going to tend to flow much more easily. And that's because those silicas aren't kind of bonded together. Um, and so it's going to just flow nice and easy. When you increase the amount of silica, those are gonna bond and kind of um, like sticky everything up. So it's more difficult for it to flow. So the example that I use in my classroom is if I'm sitting in with like say 100 students and I say, okay, you're each representing a silica and we're going to exit the classroom. And anytime that you accidentally bump into somebody, you need to make a bond. And so as you exit the classroom, you can picture that you would end up kind of bonding up with a lot of other classmates. And so it would be very difficult for you to flow out of that classroom. Um, now let's just say that there are 10 or 15 students in that same big classroom. They'd probably end up flowing out pretty easily. Nobody really bump into each other. There wouldn't be a lot of bonds made. And so they would flow nice and easily. So it's a little bit of a silly uh, way to think about it, but it really does work. So the higher the viscosity, that's going to be when you have lots of silica that are all bonded together and kind of messing everything up. Um, the lower viscosity, so it flows really easily, is when you have low silica and it just can flow nice and easy. And one thing I should mention is oftentimes these two things are related because what happens is the low silica melts, if you're familiar with the term mafic melts, they tend to exist at higher temperatures. And so that kind of goes together. You have low silica, it exists at a higher temperature, so it's going to be really flowing very easily like that really hot pancake syrup. When you have high silica, they tend to exist at lower temperatures. And so that's going to have this really high viscosity, nice and sticky, like your really cold pancake syrup. So they're kind of complementary.